ABC7 Bangor. This is ABC7 News at Noon. A Prescott man accused of a double murder was in court in Caribou Monday. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. That story is coming up. Also, we have a follow-up as the state fire marshal's office continues to investigate an explosion in Stonington on Sunday morning. And we'll hear from Maine Senator Susan Collins regarding the raid of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. That's along with the rest of our stories. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Alrighty, happy Tuesday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Already a small crowd advisory is in effect for the areas highlighted here. Lasting until about 6 p.m. on Wednesday, we have an area of low pressure moving in from the south going toward the north. I'll bring some wind with the two as we've been watching a little bit of development this morning in some areas. Now the clouds starting to break up at this point. We'll be under a partly cloudy sky today with a little bit more cloud cover on the way later on tonight. But a lot of activity out in the ocean already, though, and unfortunately, this is heading in our direction. But if there's any good news there, more precipitation on the way. We need precipitation. It's been dry across this part of the state. But overall, small chance for a shower or storm today, but more clouds on the way later on tonight. But I think the chances for precipitation, precipitation for the most part should hold off until we head towards tomorrow. But otherwise, though, the winds won't be too bad. Maybe a few areas up to around 12 to 15 miles per hour, but other areas up to 20 miles per hour possible later today with gusts and really heading up to 25 mile per hour gusts for the daytime tomorrow. So your forecast would say not too bad. Lower 80s part of the county with a slight chance for a thunderstorm and that east wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 60 degrees becoming mostly cloudy with a slight chance for a rain shower late. I think most of us will stay dry. Otherwise, that northwest wind backing off to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tomorrow, upper 60s rain likely up to an inch in some areas with that northeast breeze getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. Mostly cloudy skies, temperatures in the lower 80s, part of the county in a few areas as well. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. A Presque Isle man accused of a double murder was in court in Caribou Monday. A.J. Douglas has the details. During Bobby Nightingale's murder trial, opening statements began with the prosecution describing the events of that disturbing night when two lifeless bodies were found on State Road in Castle Hill back in 2019. The wallets on the murdered men revealed their identities. Roger Ellis, age 51, was the driver. <coughs> Alan Curtis, age 25, was the passenger. They were not far from Roger's home when they were murdered. Lead defense attorney Vern Parody advised the jury to wait to hear all the facts in the case before making a judgment on his client. Because somebody has been charged with something does not mean that they're guilty. Uh, and that the evidence needs to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that that person is guilty. And in this case, there's, I, I, I do not believe the state can meet that burden. Multiple witnesses testified to seeing and hearing gunshots prior to the discovery of both bodies. Maine State Police Major Crime Sergeant Micah Perkins reports police found a shell casing that matched one of the possible firearms used in the Castle Hill shooting in Nightingale's home. Micah Lynn testified that Nightingale Facebook messaged her a picture of the same four-wheeler found at the crime scene a month prior to the shooting deaths. The defense argues the four-wheeler from prior Facebook messages has not been confirmed as the ATV involved in the murder investigation. Tuesday, more state witnesses are expected to take the stand. In Caribou, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. The state fire marshal's office responded to an explosion at 160 Fifield Point Road in Stonington on Sunday morning. Remains believed to be the homeowner, 71-year-old David Crutcher, were found and transported to the office of the state medical examiner in Augusta. According to neighbors, Crutcher had owned the property for around six years and lived alone. Neighbor Tim Gibbon recalled hearing the blast from his home on Sunday morning. And there was this uh, most uh, incredible explosion. It was just like a bomb had gone off. When I got up there, there were multiple other smaller explosions, uh, I guess gas tanks going off and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I mean, it was obviously a total, a total de destruction. Investigators have established the explosions took place before the fire. The official cause of the fire is still under investigation. There is no evidence of foul play at this time. 
Rockland police are continuing to investigate multiple acts of vandalism. Police say they have been notified of at least five properties that were tagged with graffiti, including children's playground equipment. The incidents happened on Edmonton Ave, North Main Street and Harbor Park between the hours of 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. on August 12th. They say one suspect has been identified. They're asking anyone with information to contact them at 594-0316. Police received evidence in connection to an armed robbery in Fairfield that happened on Friday. At around 1230 Monday afternoon, officers with the Skowhegan and Waterville Police Departments, Somerset County Sheriff's Office, Maine DEA and state police simultaneously served search warrants on two apartments at 33 West Front Street in Skowhegan. According to police, evidence was seized during the searches, which were part of an investigation into the armed robbery at the Fairfield Center Circle K on Friday. Police say the investigation remains ongoing. Maine Senator Susan Collins has issued a statement in regards to the Intelligence Committee's request for information of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. On Sunday, Florida Republican Marco Rubio and Virginia Democrat Mark Warner sent a private letter to Director of National Intelligence April Haynes and Attorney General Merrick Garland in regards to the FBI search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home last week. Senator Collins released a statement following that letter saying, in part, quote, The American people deserve a full accounting of the extraordinary action taken by the FBI last week. I am encouraged that following consultation with Senate Intelligence Committee members, Chairman Warner and Vice Chairman Rubio have requested critical information related to the FBI search of former President Trump's residence. It's imperative that the committee receive all classified documents found during the search, as well as the FBI affidavit, which would describe in detail any justification for the search. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, the New Balance tent sale has returned to Skowhegan, and there's some extra good news during this year's sale. We'll take a look when we return. We'll be right back. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. I know there's conflicting information about Dupuytren's contraction. I thought I couldn't get treatment yet. Well, people may think that their contracture has to be severe to be treated, but it doesn't. If you can't lay your hand flat on the table, Talk to a hand specialist. But what if I don't want surgery? Well, then you should find a hand specialist certified to offer non-surgical treatments. What's the next step? Visit findahandspecialist.com today to get started. Inflation, a broken supply chain, and high gas prices. Mainers everywhere are facing tough decisions about rising costs. Growing up as part of a small family business in Leeds, I learned what a struggling economy does to small businesses, jobs, and to working class people. And serving as a Marine in Afghanistan and Iraq taught me to stand strong for what's right in the face of adversity. I'm Jared Golden, and that's why in Congress, I'm an independent voice for you, taking on my own party to stand up for Maine families. I was the only Democrat to vote against trillions of dollars of President Biden's agenda because I knew it would make inflation worse. I've stood with law enforcement against defunding the police. I support cutting the gas tax and increasing domestic oil production. I'm working to lower prescription drug costs and standing firm against any cuts to Social Security and Medicare. I'll always be an independent fighter for you. I'm Jared Golden, and this is my family. I approve this message because when it comes to doing what's right for your family, I'll never back down. Salida's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Saliba's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. You're watching ABC7 Bangor.
Gas prices in Maine keep falling. They're still higher than the national average, but dropped about 20 cents a gallon over the last week. And so when Kingsley explained, drivers have a whole range of emotions when it comes to price at the pump, but all of them hope it keeps going down. It costs me $80 to fill my car a week, and I barely go anywhere. Gas prices were around $5 a gallon to kick off our summer in Maine. Dylan Laban returned home from his year away at Maine Maritime Academy and was faced with sticker shock. When I left, it was definitely much lower than this, and it's quite a shock to see it come back this high. But prices have dropped significantly. In Maine, the average is $4.27 a gallon, down 70 cents since the start of June. It's been huge. As a matter of fact, I was just noticing my gas, I think it was only $6, $6. Normally it's about 80 bucks. So, you know, the 14 bucks, yeah, you notice that each time you're at the pump. While relief with gas prices is clearly here, every Mainer has a story about how it has affected their summer plans. So we've wanted to go, you know, further away and do more stuff, but we've kind of been picking and choosing one or two instead of maybe more traveling than we would have liked to do. I spend roughly $20 a day in gas now. Yes, it has. Nuri's Baez planned to travel across the country this summer and didn't let the gas prices get in her way. She actually bought a more fuel efficient car to do it. I will fill this one up with $40 compared to filling up my minivan with 60, 65. AAA expects more drivers in Maine to pick up as gas prices trend down. Right now they are still driving less, uh, combining errands and making some other changes to their lifestyles and habits. The New Balance tent sale is an annual tradition in Skowhegan. For more than 25 years, New Balance, which has a factory in Skowhegan, has held a tent sale at the same time as the Skowhegan State Fair. However, this year the company is extending the sale from now until Labor Day. Shoppers can buy the brand name footwear at discounted prices under the tent. Uh, we come every year to the tent sale. Um, have for years. Yeah. Um, and then you just depends on what we find. Yeah. <laughs> if it's yeah. a good deal, then snag them all. Yeah. Shoes are buy one pair, get a second pair half price, and 40% off all apparel and accessories. Customers can stop by the tent sale Monday through Saturday, 10 until 6, and Sundays, 10 until 5. Americans are still spending money on fun this summer despite high inflation. 6.2 million workers took vacation or personal days during the week of the Census Bureau's July household survey this year. Theme parks say their sales are visitors are reaching historic highs. The demand for hotels is strong. The CEO of Host Hotels and Resorts believes the strong demand could extend into Thanksgiving and Christmas. Vacation rentals are also doing well to help consumers save on costs. Now with Tuesday's business news, here's Leo Jonathan. The Nasdaq closed up 6% Monday, the Dow up one half of 1%, and the S&P gained 0.4%. Stock markets overseas also rose overnight. Walmart is striking a deal with Paramount to offer its streaming service to subscribers of the Walmart shipping service. Starting next month, subscribers to Walmart Plus will also get access to Paramount Plus as well. Thousands of pouches of Capri Sun are being recalled by Kraft Heinz. Some of the wild cherry-flavored juice blend may have been accidentally mixed with a cleaning solution. The affected pouches have a best-used-by date of June 25, 2023. And eating out costs more than cooking, but not by much. The Labor Department says while consumer prices at grocery stores jumped more than 13 percent in July, restaurant prices were up about 7.5 percent. Some restaurant chains are saying their prices are of better value. I'm Leo Jonathan with Tuesday's Business on ABC7. The Red Cross is urging nations to resume sending aid to Afghanistan despite their feelings about the Taliban, who celebrated a year in power on Monday. Red Cross Director Robert Mardini says the humanitarian crisis there is, quote, unbearable. The organization is providing food, water and medical care. The Red Cross is even providing financial support to over 30 hospitals to keep them operational, paying staff salaries, providing fuel for ambulances and feeding patients. Humanitarian organizations alone cannot replace uh, public institutions of a country of 40 million people. Uh, so we really urge states and development agencies to return to Afghanistan uh, to support uh, Afghans who continue to bear the brunt of economic turmoil, uh, drought and the fallout of uh, decades of conflict. More than half the country is facing rising poverty, drought and malnutrition as violence escalates. Coming up in the aftermath of the Supreme Court ruling on Roe v. Wade, several states are launching efforts to define if and when a woman can have an abortion. We'll explain next.
It's one fantastic ride. The turbocharged, tech-inspired Kia Forte. Best two out of three. Get 3.49% APR for up to 48 months in the purchase of a new 2023 Forte. Did you know you don't have to be 65 years old to qualify for Medicare and Medicaid? Many people who are already on Medicaid also qualify for a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan, which means you can start taking advantage of all these benefits right now. A $0 or low monthly plan premium, preventive and comprehensive dental coverage, hearing coverage, vision coverage, and prescription drug coverage with free home delivery, plus extra benefits like free over-the-counter healthcare items, free transportation, free gym membership, home delivered meals, and WellCare's telehealth services, which include online doctor visits and a 24-hour nurse advice line. If you know you're eligible or think you might be, call 1-844-918-0047. We'll send you our free Medicare all-in-one guide or visit enrollwellcare.com to enroll now. WellCare, it's Medicare done well. Feel the difference of alpaca apparel from the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store in Belfast. Stop by their ranch location to interact with these amazing animals and enjoy the beautiful main outdoors with your very own alpaca walk. Shop in-store or online today and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. With their incredible selection of socks, sweaters, hats, and more, experience the unique qualities that alpaca fiber brings with the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. The issue of abortion rights is playing out in state legislatures, in courts, and in referendums on the ballot following the fall of Roe v. Wade. Despite polls showing the majority of Americans believe abortion should be legal, several states are launching their own efforts to define if and when a woman can have an abortion. ABC's M. Wynn has more. The battle over abortion rights will likely influence the midterm elections. At least 15 states have ceased nearly all abortion services. We pray that the life of the unborn be preserved and protected. Indiana lawmakers were the first in the nation to pass a bill restricting access to abortion since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Republican Governor Eric Holcomb quickly signed it into law. That is tended to be more pushback against those kind of initiatives, those kind of bills, than about something that, that tries to, to strike something off the middle ground. That was a loss for abortion rights advocates, but they have also had a few wins. A state judge in Wyoming blocked the trigger ban because it was too unclear. The Supreme Court in Montana temporarily stopped further abortion restrictions, including a law that would have banned the procedure after 20 weeks of pregnancy. And in the first state to give the public a chance to weigh in on abortion rights through a referendum, Kansas overwhelmingly voted to protect a woman's right to choose. Women from other states flocking there for reproductive care. It's just really disheartening that I can't do something like this in, in my hometown, um, that I have to travel, that I'm, I'm not trusted to make decisions for my own body, especially ones that, you know, me and my husband make together. The Justice Department is getting involved, filing a lawsuit against the state of Idaho seeking to block a law that would make it a felony for doctors to perform abortions. Attorney General Merrick Garland saying despite the law providing an exception to prevent a woman's death, it includes no exception for cases in which the abortion is necessary to prevent serious jeopardy to the woman's health. Looking ahead to November, abortion measures will be on the ballot in at least four other states. California, Kentucky, Montana and Vermont. Michigan may also add a ballot initiative. Democrats think if this can happen in Kansas, it can happen anywhere. The country is generally in favor of some access to abortion. Uh, it does not feel like abortion should be banned across the board. Obesity is on the rise in children, and the pandemic only worsened the issue. Now an organization is taking steps to combat that. With more, here's ABC's Ike Jachi. 
Millions of kids stayed inside for months during the pandemic, gaming and watching TV, YouTube, and TikTok with limited opportunities to safely exercise. In hopes to combat these trends, the CDC celebrated National PE and Sports Week to honor the physical education teachers who work to make exercise accessible for America's children. The CDC recommends 60 minutes per day of exercise, and kids need three types. Aerobic exercise, enough to bring your heart rate up, muscle strength exercises like weightlifting and bone strengthening exercises like walking and yoga. During National PE and Sports Week, the CDC asked teachers to share their experiences trying to make exercise accessible to kids. If your child is struggling to get enough exercise, talk to your pediatrician or check out the CDC Healthy Schools website for advice on physical activity before and after school. With this Medical Minute, I'm Ika Jauci. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Situated in Jonesboro on the coast of Maine lies Baron View Golf Course, a true links course that's a treat for golfers of all skill levels. We feature a driving range, putting green, practice sand trap, pro shop, and snack bar. Open seven days a week. Please call ahead for a tee time. In life, many things matter. Black lives matter. Asian and Caucasian lives matter. Police officers and firefighters matter. Youngsters and senior citizen lives matter. Think about it. Every life matters. And it all begins first in Maine and everywhere when the protection of the unborn matters. When moderate to severe ulcerative colitis persists, put it in check with Rinvoke, a once daily pill. When you see God unpredictable, I got rapid symptom relief with Renvoke. Check. When UC held me back, I got lasting steroid-free remission with Renvoke. Check. And when UC got the upper hand, Renvoke, Renvoke helped, helped visibly repair, repair the, the colon, colon lining. lining. Check. Check. Rapid symptom relief, lasting steroid-free remission, and a chance to visibly repair the colon lining. Check, check, and check. Renvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Renvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC in check and keep it there with Renvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Rinvoke and learn how AbbVie could help you save. Situated in Jonesboro on the coast of Maine lies Baron View Golf Course, a true links course that's a treat for golfers of all skill levels. We feature a driving range, putting green, practice sand trap, pro shop, and snack bar. Open seven days a week. Please call ahead for a tea time. Have you ever come home after a long day, opened the fridge, and couldn't find anything you wanted to make? I know I have. On those nights, I often grab a few eggs and get creative with whatever else I find. Now, if you're not sure how fresh your eggs are, here's a trick. Fill a bowl of cold water and place your eggs in it. If they sink to the bottom and lay on their side, they're fresh. If they stand on one end at the bottom of the bowl, they might be a few weeks old, but they're still good. And if they float to the top, they're history. So let me show you what I made the other night. I began by sautéing some spinach in a little olive oil, just until it wilted. To that, I added some eggs that I beat together with some oregano, onion powder, and a little salt and pepper. Once it started to set up, I added in a chunked up tomato and some feta cheese that I almost forgot I had. After scrambling everything together, I ended up with a Greek feast that was amazing. The eggs were nice and fluffy, the veggies made it super colorful, and the feta added just the right amount of tang. So the next time you don't know what to make, keep this spinach feta scramble in mind. And as always, the recipe is online. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an exceptionally tasty way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. A 90-year-old veteran has created a hand-carved legacy for future generations. A dedication was held over the weekend for a wooden eagle carved by Navy veteran George Gunning and is painted by his wife Donna, both of Windsor. 
It was dedicated to Moral Worcester and all of those who carry out the work of Reads Across America. The organization's mission is to remember the fallen, honor those that serve, and teach the next generation a value of freedom. Over the last 15 years, the Gunnings have made more than 4,000 hand-carved and painted wooden eagle-headed canes to donate to Maine veterans. They say they were moved to create the larger eagle sculpture after learning more about Reads Across America program and the impact it's had on veterans and families across the country. The eagle dedication was part of the organization's annual Stem to Stone event in Down East Maine. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Happy Happy Tuesday afternoon, your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New Eden's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, it is that small craft advisory again, lasting till about 6 p.m. As we head towards your Wednesday, that area of low pressure moving from the south, going toward the north, and that will be causing us some problems in the Wave Heights Department, but some precipitation on the way. We need it, though. We even saw a few showers in some spots earlier this morning, but now things starting to quiet down for now. We'll be watching for increasing clouds as really we head towards later on today and the parts of tonight, though. But otherwise, high pressure will stay away from us. It's this area of low pressure right about in here that will move from the south to the north. That will give us that opportunity for more showers and even a few rumbles of thunder coming up soon. Wave height is still calm, but not by much, though. We're at one foot here across the coast, but further down toward the south, six foot wave heights being noted. Unfortunately, that is heading in our direction. Some gusty winds expected with some of those gusty winds reaching up to about 15 miles per hour today. A quick back off tonight with some gusts reaching up to around 20 to 25 miles per hour as we head towards tomorrow as that area of low pressure begins to move in. Our average high is 80 degrees. We'll reach for the lower 80s today. The low pressure will help to back off the temperatures by Wednesday to the upper 60s. Lower 70s Thursday. Upper 70s by Friday, then back in the lower to middle 80s by the weekend and even into Monday. All right, your muggy mirror, though, showing dew points. That will be on the rise a little bit up into the 60s as we head towards Wednesday and Thursday, but gradually backing off a little bit as we head towards the weekend, so this won't be anything too ridiculous. UV next forecast for today will be at a 6 as considered high. That means a burn time of around 30 minutes, so hats, sunglasses, sunscreen, and shade will be necessary as you do have the door to avoid a bad sunburn. Moving forward for today, a party cloudy sky has a small chance for a shower or a storm, but increasing clouds later on tonight becoming most Mostly cloudy. Watching out for more showers. I'll be heading moving as we head towards Wednesday with some decent downpours as well as the center of low pressure begins to move. And this is good news, though. We need the precipitation. We have been dry across this part of the state, so up to an inch of rain that we're expecting at this point. This will be welcome news for many of the areas that are still in drought. And here's that latest drought monitor, though, still showing dry across the good part of the state. So any rainfall will definitely be welcome at this point. So your forecast for today: lower 80s, partly cloudy, with a slight chance for a thunderstorm. Now east wind getting up to about 20 miles. Per hour. Later on tonight, 60 degrees, mostly cloudy with a slight chance for a rain shower late. Most of us should stay dry with a northwest wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, upper 60s, rain will be likely. Northeast breeze getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast. More rain as we head towards Thursday. Highs in the low 70s. Upper 70s by Friday with a partly cloudy sky. And mostly sunny by Saturday. Highs in the mid 80s. A week ago, we were complaining because it was so hot. Tomorrow, it's only going to be 67 degrees. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon. Do you struggle to open or close your windows? Are they drafty or leaky? Are you constantly...